I hope you are ready for a lot of 1v1 replays. Because I have 18 games that I've played since the release of the one year anniversary patch. And uh, I'm going to make six episodes of three games each um, in this upcoming series. So there will be a lot of 1v1 games. It starts off against Santiago Villa Lobos M12, with Persians. And I'm Incas, and we're playing on Arabia. Let's go. I'll do a uh, half speed here. I might do some full speeds on these two uh, to get through it all. Uh, like I said, this is Persians versus Incas. Actually, I think we're doing full speed. Uh, I have a fairly good map. Easy to wall here. I don't remember if I wall so while since I played this game. Uh, but we will see what happens. He has a bit more of an open front. He also has berries on the front. Secondary gold on the front. Um, main gold on the side. I have my berries tucked nice in the back. My main gold is forward though, but it's behind this potential wall off here. So in that case, it's fairly good. I'm going to pull up that overview. It seems like I'm a bit behind on the villager production. I get his scout. Okay. Um... My scout is currently scouting his base. Ah, running dangerously close. Didn't lose much HP, but almost gets caught. Looks like it's all right. Uh, he gets the fuel age first, but I'm coming forward with some militia and I'm on my way to fuel. Ah, can I deny this wall off? Yes. All right, so I have a way into his base. Have a fairly decent score lead at the moment. We're both in fuel age, and uh, he does have two more. Yeah, two more villagers, pretty much exactly. I have more military though. Double the militaries count. He has four archers, which on paper should counter my men at arms, but the eagles should do all right against the archers. Yeah, they're one archer down. Can I get another one? Nope. But I do get two villagers, so uh, that was most of his villager advantage gone. And also the pressure here is of course important. One, two more archers down. So that's good. I have a uh, ten up on the military now. And also putting pressure on his gold miners. So it's probably a lot of idle time, so even if he on paper has more villagers, the quality of his economy is probably less. Both are now in Castle Age. I have some more crossbows out here. I forced a tower because I was shooting his wood line from the opposite side with the crossbows. Always nice to be able to force a tower. Less stone for town centers. He can only put down one town center here now. And he has to put it close to stone to get more stone for more. Ah, breaking through the palisades, get three more villagers. So villager count now is uh, solidly in my favor, 49 to 41. Ah, I get my army wiped down here. That's not so good. So now military count is actually very even, six to three. Most of my mass was taken out there, but I have secured a pretty solid eco lead. And now I have units to counter his, I have pikes against his uh, Persian Knights. Plus, uh, I keep making crossbows. This is a good thing about Incas. They can do pretty much anything, except the force cavalry. So whatever you need, whatever you see your uh, enemy is doing, you can find a good counter, pretty much. Uh, wanting to put some more pressure on, getting a siege workshop up front, get a mangonel. So I can... And yeah, there's still a hole in his wall. And I've definitely built up a larger force now. I have 32 military, he has 16. 
He's trying to go for a raid, but I'm on him with pikes while he takes out my pike force. It wasn't that many. And I'm... Not, I've messed up my shift clicking here, clearly. Uh, so I haven't actually walled off the way I wanted to. He gets a lot of kills here, so that actually makes up for the whole uh, eco lead that I had. So that was a very valuable raid. He lost his whole night force though, plus I'm on his front line. Uh, there's a pause. There was a pause there. I'm getting a forward castle. Uh, villager count is very even, but I am in Imperial Age. Ooh, he gets two... Ooh, nice little split there, but he gets both my, my uh, mangonels. Not so important anymore because now I have trebs. So an upgrade to the siege craft there. Uh, new knight force comes into raid, but this time I'm ready with pikes. So that raid I think was stopped before much damage was done. And of course he has <laughs> a pretty significant problem in the fact that there are seven trebs taking down his town. Uh, score lead is quite significant um, and everything seems to be pretty much falling apart for him here now I think he's on his last town center yeah and it goes down there the two last town centers going down and he taps out okay so that was um, successful counter and just a lot of pressure from the Inca and the Persians could not hold. GG. Quick look at the statistics. Military. Um, uh, KD is actually... It's positive, but it's not overwhelming. I used a lot of cheap units, so I lost quite a lot. Uh, but definitely largest army. <laughs> uh, more food, more wood, more stone. He has slightly more gold. Uh, but I made quite a lot of pikes, so that makes sense. I got, uh, or he got fuel age first by quite a lot, actually. Um, castle age was pretty much the same. And he had quite a late imperial age, which hurt him a lot because he couldn't defend against the trebuchets. Um, I did have villager high. That's probably end game number um not terribly high should have been higher um i guess timeline pretty much tells the story of this game okay let us move on we played quite a lot of unranked here in between but here we have snow baskets as celts versus me as khmer and this is on uh, what's the name of this map again? That's not where I see that. Uh, 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 Golden Swamp. So, um, this is uh, an interesting map. I like it. It's, um, as you can see, a lake in the middle with fish and small ponds. You can uh, walk across. And in the middle, there's an island with lots of gold. So it's kind of a gold rush surrounded by fish. And no hill. There's no hill in the middle. It's just flat ground. Uh, trying to steal some cows. He gets away with one. I do a um, water build here. Lots of people on wood. And then get the fishing ships out. He does not. He just goes for land. A lot of the water buffalo focus. Uh, walling in this little enclave here so I can have uh, some safer um, wood gathering. I know that the Celts are likely to come over with uh, some sort of offensive infantry and here it seems he's preparing it. He gets men-at-arms there. Um, of course, the Celts have faster moving infantry, so it's uh, it can be quite annoying to have Celts raid you in uh, both Dark Age and Feudal Age. With the newest patch, they've actually lost that bonus in Dark Age, though, so the militia are just generic. Uh, that's one of the more significant changes 
Yeah, I actually try to wall him out, but I miss here, so he gets into my wood line. Quite annoying. Um, I walled in my gold. Um, and just trying to avoid as much damage as possible here now. These meta arms kind of bugging out. I still have a untouched water eco, though, so that gives me a lot of um, extra income. Gets the cast ledge. Let's bring up the score. So yeah, I have a quite significant score lead, mostly because of a uh, stronger economy and a fast age up. Of course, this Khmer farms, right? So the food just trickles in steadily, very efficiently. Uh, building up a knight force. Knights is always a good and stable unit to base the army around. Um, and with that steady food income. Oi. With a steady food income, it's easy to, to maintain production. Ah, a couple of villagers going down on the, unnecessarily there, uh, but the knights cleared it out. I have to back up, um, hear that nasty monk sound, uh, but I can establish myself in the middle. There's n no presence from him there. It seems like he's kind of one, uh, putting everything, uh, all the eggs in one basket here. With this push, he puts a lot of resources into that. Uh, he gets one knight with 5 HP, but I get his mangonel, so I'll take that trade. Uh, I make some cow archers to fend off the pikes. Uh, of course, the cow archers struggle a bit against the mangonel, and he also has a scorpion out. Um, Celt siege fire faster, so it's very dangerous. And combined with the monks here, uh, this is starting to get a little tricky. Uh, I but I bring in some more cavalry, sneak it in from behind, manage to take out the siege, and then he knows that the cow archers can just back up and back up and uh, kite the pikes, and there's not much else to do. I also have the position in the middle with a castle at this point, uh, and the economy is probably quite skewed in my favor. Let's have a look. Uh, military is actually quite even. Yeah, KD is pretty close, and I have the more expensive units, so that actually, it's almost f favorable for him that it looks like this, but um, actually he must have lost a lot of units. He must have, yeah, he must have killed his own pikes with the mangonel, that's probably why he has two more losses than I have um, kills. Um, I have more food, not surprisingly with the Khmer. Uh, also more wood, which is kind of surprising given that he had his Celt 25% uh, faster wood gathering. Uh, he didn't take stone at all. I took stone to build another town center plus the castle in the middle and considerably more gold for me. So yeah, I just have a stronger economy across the board. Uh, he put a lot of emphasis on that one attack and was hoping to push in with Monk Pike Siege and didn't quite succeed. Um, villager High... 13 more for me there. He did catch a relic, which is good, but uh, not really the most significant thing. And again, the population graph kind of tells the story. All right, so Khmer, very strong. Kind of a kind of a sieve win, maybe. Well, Celts are good too. Uh, if you can leverage the wood cutting bonus, it's a very strong eco bonus. So Maya was a Spanish. On Arabia, Tavira Sinirayna is Spanish, and I am Maya. Let's go. Of course, get housed always. I never get used to the Maya start. I have to learn that. I've kind of started to learn Chinese now. If I random Chinese, I'm aware that I have to do things differently, but uh, Maya still haven't. Uh, gotten used to it. Started with the extra villager, so you gotta get loom right away. Build houses. Um, actually, uh, of course you build houses, you always do that. So the only only difference is you get loom first. Uh, so it's not a difficult start, it's just you have to do the right thing. Chinese is outright difficult. You have to stress around to find all your food resources and get the villagers in position and have them not walk in front of each other and like everything has to be perfect um, that is really hard um, this is not really hard it's just a matter of 
thinking of thinking about it or thinking of it. Um, I think I'm trying quite the greedy play here, um, trying to get to Castle Age. I don't know exactly why I want to do that, given he is Spanish and probably also want the Castle Age. But I'm trying to wall off but fail miserably because he gets in. And I managed to wall him off or out there to, from doing more damage to my gold. And I also wall partly the berries, but half of the bush diggers uh, are still exposed. Now they're all exposed, so that's kind of a fail, that wall. And uh, he hides up down here. I do see him, but still I don't react to the fact that he comes to my wood line. So not very good. He, Oh, he does so much damage up here. And I just tap out because I realize that, uh, well, he also built a tower up here, pressuring my gold. Uh, I realize that he has quite the strong position and with Spanish, he now has the choice. He can either go into Knights or go into Conks and I have no way of stopping it. Um, and that is just disaster uh, waiting to happen, even harder than it already has. So tapping out there. Um, just too um, too greedy, too defensive. Not a good game. Um, see, I had more food because I was aiming towards Castle Age. Um, but he took more gold, actually. Uh, I guess he... Well, what was he planning on using that gold for... Not entirely sure. I just, I think he just put dudes on gold just for no particular reason and just forgot them there while he was fighting on the front. Um, but it's just stronger eco in general. More villagers, not significantly, but that early in the game to be two villagers down is not good. Um, and then those are two villagers killed and kill at least two. So. Looks pretty even, but the situation on the map was just not good. Uh, and I, I didn't have a good plan. I think that was part of it. I just was annoyed with myself because I chose such a silly strat. Uh, so next episode will be Portuguese Khmer. So this time I'm up against the Khmer. So we'll see how that goes. There'll be four lakes. That's an exciting map. But I'll cut it off here to not make these um, videos too long. Uh, so stay tuned for next episode of this 18-game uh, run-through of uh, my ranked games from the anniversary patch so far.